invite Dr. Bhalla, uh, who's our uh, secretary, dynamic sec secretary of Delhi of Thalmic Society. And he'll be talking to us about biometry and IOL formulas, getting it right. Uh, Dr. Parul, uh, we all know cataract surgery is a refractive surgery. In earlier times, cataract was removed first and spectacle prescription given last. But today we calculate power of IUL first and cataract surgery is done afterwards. And since 75, IUL power has been calculated basically using two parameters that is keratometry and exe length but today we use more parameters and today we can customize the power of IOL to achieve near plano result even in highly myopic or hyperopic eyes but there are a group of patients who greatly value their emetropia and when you break news to them that they require spectacles after cataract surgery because of inaccurate IOL power calculation they are extremely disappointed and what are the major sources for prediction error for IOL power the foremost important part in 35 percent patients is prediction of effective lens position followed by 17% because of axial length and 10% because of keratometry measure, uh, measurements. And few subjects in the field of ophthalmology are as complex as IOL power formulas because it involves the use of mathematicians and we ophthalmologists by nature are not very fond of mathematics. Earlier formulas had some problem. They made some assumptions. That one is, as pointed out by uh, Dr. Parul, they assumed fixed ratio of anterior and posterior corneal curvature of 0.82. Cornea was treated as a thin lens with refractive index 1.3375. Actually, it is 1.37. And cornea was treated as a prolate sphere. This used to give us correct result in average eyes, but not in atypical eyes. And there were some more hurdles inaccurate estimation of effective lens position because it was assumed in older formulas that shorter eyes and flatter KIs are supposed to have shallow anterior chamber and shorter effective lens position in contrast to longer eyes and steeper KIs which are supposed to have longer effective lens position. But Holiday taught us that there are nine types of eyes. Even in eyes with normal anterior segment, 80% may have short axial length and 90% may have long axial length. And in patients with normal axial length, 2% may have short or deeper anterior chamber depth. So relationship between anterior segment size and axial length is not proportionate in 80% of short and 90% of long eyes. So older formula are bound to fall in shorter and longer eyes. So is it bad to keep just using the older formulas? Yes, it is because the survey told us that only 1% of surgeons achieved accuracy more than 92% within plus minus 0.5 diopter if you keep using the older generation formulas. This was Rainer Medal lecture delivered and they said now it is possible to achieve 91% of eyes within 0.5 diopter of the target refraction if we change with the technology. So what are these new formulas? Hoffer H5, Lada's Olsen, Barrett, uh, uh, Barrett Universal 2 and Hill RBF calculator. Prediction theory says more the number of variables to describe an event, more accurately the outcome can be predicted. So we have jumped from two parameters of axial length and keratometry in 1988 to four parameters in Olsen, five in Barrett Universal 2 and Holiday 2 has seven parameters. Artificial intelligence is used in Hill RBF and ray tracing in Oculus and FICO optics and there are some intermediate factors that have been used to uh, assume or arrive at effective lens position while SRKT had a constant Hagee's and holiday one has personalized and uh, uh, Hagee's has a0 a1 a2 Hoffer Q and holiday two has anterior chamber depth holiday one has surgeon factor Olsen has C constant and Barrett has lens factor so what are these lens constants actually these were typically developed during the later stages of regulatory process with short term and limited number of cases when plano convex lens were used and contact ultrasound biometry was used. So if we have only the manufacturer's lens constants, uh, then we you, when we uh, do get some error. So it makes sense to optimize your lens constants. Either you can analyze your own data or you can go to uh, the uh, www.drhill.com uh, or Dr. Hagee's ULIP website. Surgeons who do not personalize their constants, 50% of their cases have uh, error more than 0.5 adapters. So you see on the left hand slide, 
uh, if you don't optimize your constants within 0.5 adapter it is only 18 percent and this jumps to about 70 percent if you optimize your constants and within one adapter it changes from 50 to 95 percent that's a huge difference in your uh, results so what is this barrett universal 2 formula which everybody is talking about it is recommended for both short and long eyes and it has betaized keratometry axial length anterior chamber depth lens thickness and white to white measurements in that order of importance it uses artificial intelligence and the it gives us predicted accuracy of 91 percent of eyes within 0.5 adapters Olson uses ray tracing LADA super formula intelligently combines the best performing portions of multiple third and fourth generation IUL formulas Kane formula is uh, uses axial length keratometry anterior chamber le uh, depth lens thickness CCT and also gender of the patient to make its predictions EVO 2.0 formula it is a thick lens version formula and it also uses these parameters and it is also being quoted hugely in the current literature interoperative aberrometry is not going to make lens of calculations obsolete in the near future at best it is valuable as a confirmatory or complementary test and the indications are in post refractive surgery cases and in astigmatism uh, correction with toric iuls ray tracing IUL calculation formula is equivalent to third generation formulas in normal eyes with spherical IULs but it is definitely superior in odd eyes with extreme axial length and corneal conditions and it's incorporated in oculics and phaco optics but there are limitations of ray tracing formula that is they are still dependent on accurate estimation of effective lens position which is the still a bugbear and so there is no reason to switch as they are not outperforming the standard formulas hill rbf formula is good because it not only gives you iul power it also gives you accuracy level it tells you whether your results are in bounds or out of bounds depending on whether your uh, patient's data parallels the data within the data bank or it is not then it is out of bound indication so if we compare barrett and hill rbf both are current both are more sophisticated although they use completely different para uh, premises like barrett uses artificial intelligence and uh, 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 Barrett uses uh, is a theoretical paraxial formula and sorry and Hill RBF is artificial using artificial intelligence but both these methods give recommendations that are within 0 0.25 adapter of each other so what should I do should I use multiple formulas and average the results Douglas Koch follows this policy he uses multiple formulas but holiday Barrett says use horses for courses uh, premises that is use specific formulas for specific condition so what is the best way to you deal with short eyes older conventional wisdom told us that you use hoffer q but now it has been replaced by the publications in the re recent literature which are more or more using barrett and hill rbf and problem in longer eye we always know uh, we also know that there is hyperopic surprise when dealing with eyes more than 24 millimeter so the three formulas which work well are again you can just remember barrett universal 2 and hill rbf and all these new generation formulas are free of cost available on site you don't need to spend like holiday 2 this is meta-analysis which has been published in 2022 and they you can see in order of preference with short l axial and less than 22 between 22 to 26 and more than 26 you will find that srkt and the older generation formulas are not there in the first five the best performing ones are the cane evo 2.0 vrf barrett universal to hill rbf and they're followed by other formulas same thing was reciprocated by publication of melis 20 uh, melis in 2009 in jcrs and so what are the steps you can take to maximize the likelihood of getting better outcomes please optimize your lens constants validate your measurements if your readings are beyond the normal that is if your exit length is in extreme less than 22 or more than 25 keratometry less than 40 or more than 47 so take measurements yourself because ophthalmologist is the most important and knowledgeable part of the team don't delegate it to the uh, your optometrist particularly in premium IULs and vip patients spend extra time counseling patients with short eyes or previous refractive surgery as told by dr parul and don't just keep doing what you have always done because then you will get the same error which you have always got 
So 90%, but why we are still stuck at an accuracy of 90% within 0.5 diopters and not more than that? Because limit is now not the formula. We have got very good formulas. Pre limit is the precision limit for keratometry because the least count is 0.25 diopter. For excellence, uh, it is 0.1 and for anterior chamber depth, it is 0.2 millimeter. So these least count error limits keep us at accuracy level of 90% plus minus 0.5 diopters. And then there is another problem. There is ISO permitted tolerance level permitted for various powers. If suppose I have calculated power of 21.3 diopter, nearest power available is 21.5. And ISO tolerance limit for this is 0 0.4. So I wanted to implant 21.3, but because of this tolerance permitted, I'm the error will be 21.9 so it is 0.6 diopter error when i have done perfect calculation perf good instruments good surgery still this error is for reasons beyond my control so have we reached a stage where we can use single formula i'll just take a minute more where you can use single formula for all eyes difficult to say but the closest formula which fits the bill is barrett universal 2 so this is uh, slide has been shown that these are the formulas which are outperforming the er earlier generation formulas. So improvements in technology have allowed accuracy of biometry to double every five to ten years. So we should change for the better. Eighty percent accuracy was is was acceptable in the older times, but now ninety percent accuracy is achievable. So strive for what is achievable and not settle for what is acceptable. Smartness is learning not only from your old but also from others' mistakes. So let us not only become experienced but also smart so we are now on the verge of level of accuracy for refractive outcomes after cataract surgery never before seen in ophthalmology but to fully enjoy this use validated measurements optimize your lens constraints and adapt to newer technologies we should be thankful to these ladies and gentlemen for giving us this level of accuracy holiday Wang, Cock, warren hill thomas olsen and barrett thank you everyone for your kind and patient hearing and I'll take this opportunity to invite all of you to DOS midterm conference, which we are planning to hold in Hotel Ashoka, New Delhi. And please block your date, 2nd and 3rd September. Thank you once again. Thank you, Dr. Bhalla. It's excellent talk. I always enjoy and I keep learning every time I listen to it. Thank you. I think Thank uh, you. Uh, the detail he has gone into it, we can all take the message loud and clear that yes, we must upgrade our formula because this is the a uh, single most important thing that is going to affect your outcome and uh, getting the right formula and the right biometry is uh, very, very critical important. just one point i'd like to add is that we must do all these measurements before you do anything else on your patient exactly that is before you put any drops before you do any applanation so uh, if your patient has already been dilated and if you have any doubt it's good to call the patient back another day for the biometry and you can always take, uh, if you have differences, then you can always take it on two different instruments or validate your readings by doing it on two separate days. So that's the only message I'd like to give. Thank you so much.